Hi, this is Tamara Rubin, Lead Safe Mama, LeadSafeMama.com. Today I'm trying to show you how much lead it takes to poison a child, and we're going to also compare that to how much lead is in the bottom of a Stanley cup or a Stanley, a Stanley cup, um, a Stanley quencher tumbler, or any other insulated stainless steel Stanley products, and any other insulated stainless steel products that have lead in the bottom. So you can see how much lead in terms of potential for harm is actually in one of these products. I want to start by sharing that these numbers are all micrograms of lead per square foot. So we're going to keep that measurement as our context. When my children were poisoned, the amount of lead that was the federal standard, the threshold above which was considered an unsafe level of lead in a horizontal surface like a floor that a child might interact with was 40 micrograms per square foot. That was in 2005. Then later, the federal U.S. hazard level for horizontal surfaces was lowered to 10 micrograms per square foot. The interesting thing is that the amount of lead that scientists determined was hazardous to children in horizontal surfaces in 1990, about 1990, was five micrograms per square foot. So around 1990, the scientific recommendation was that the hazard level be set at five micrograms per square foot, and instead the federal government set the hazard level for lead in horizontal surfaces that children might interact with at 40 micrograms per square foot. Said another way, the hazard level used to be 40, even though the scientists recommended that the hazard level be set at five, and then decades later, the hazard level was lowered to 10. The current hazard level is 10 micrograms per square foot. So the level at which a surface like a floor is considered hazardous to children is if there is 10 micrograms of lead per square foot on that surface or more. There's currently a new initiative to lower the hazard level and the um, people that are trying to push this initiative, which is a wonderful initiative, are looking for an absolute zero level. To recap, 40 micrograms per square foot was the hazard level when my children were poisoned in 2005. The current hazard level is 10 micrograms of lead per square foot. The scientific recommendation is that lead on horizontal surfaces should not be more than five micrograms per square foot. And the current initiative is that lead levels should be lowered for horizontal surfaces interacted with by children to zero micrograms per square foot. That's the context. So what I'm trying to explain to you now is how much lead is 40 micrograms per square foot or 10 micrograms per square foot. And I have an article about this on my website. Just put sugar packet into the um, search bar at the top of any page of leadsafemama.com or tamarubin.com and you'll see that information. But here we have a demonstration. We're looking at lead in micrograms of lead per square foot. The scientific community came up with this comparison as a way to illustrate how much lead is 40 micrograms or 10 or 5 or whatever. The most important thing to know is that there is no safe level of lead exposure for human beings. The other really important thing to know is that it just takes a microscopic amount of lead to poison a child, literally microscopic. The amount of lead that it takes to poison a child is invisible. Said another way, you cannot see the amount of lead that it takes to poison a child. It's literally microscopic, literally invisible. You need a microscope, a very high power microscope to see the amount of lead that it takes to poison a child. So when you say, oh, well, I don't see any lead there, or it looks clean to me, or there's no problem because I don't see any lead dust or lead chips, that's irrelevant because the amount of lead it takes to poison a child is invisible. I'm going to use this Dunkin' Donuts sugar packet is to illustrate how much lead it takes to poison a child. If you spread this amount of lead across a football field, an actual football field, an American football field, that would create a hazard level of 38 micrograms of lead per square foot. Now just take a minute to imagine a football field and this amount of lead across a football field evenly spread across. First off, you couldn't spread it evenly across. There'd be hot spots where there were more granules or, you know, um, areas where there were none. But this amount 
of lead across a football field would create uh, about 38 micrograms per square foot. Now compare that to the hazard level when my children were poisoned of 40 micrograms per square foot. Now, if we divide this in half, we're gonna be semi-precise here. This amount of lead dust spread evenly across the football field would create a level of lead and dust of 19 micrograms per square foot, which is nearly twice the current US federal hazard level. That's half a sugar packet worth of lead dust. Then if you divide that in half again, we're gonna take this pile of sugar and divide that in half. So half was 19. A full sugar packet was 38. This is now a quarter of a sugar packet. If this quarter of a sugar packet worth of dust were lead dust, and if that dust were spread evenly across a football field, that would create a level of nine and a half micrograms per square foot of lead on the football field. The current standard is 10 micrograms per square foot. So those numbers are approximately the same. So if this amount of lead dust was spread across an entire football field, it would create a hazardous level of lead in the dust for a child to play on that surface. If you can even just take a minute to imagine this amount of lead in the dust across a football field. Now we're gonna take this quarter of a packet of sugar and we're gonna divide that in half again. This is now one eighth of a sugar packet, about. This is half a sugar packet worth of dust. This is a quarter of a sugar packet worth of dust. And this is an eighth of a sugar packet. An eighth of a sugar packet worth of dust, if this were lead dust, would create a hazard level if this dust were spread evenly across a football field of 4.75 micrograms of lead dust per square foot. Now compare that to the scientific recommendation of what should be considered a hazard for children back in 1990, before new science became available, supporting that there's no safe level of lead exposure for children. And basically, by any standard, including the scientific recommendation standard in 1990, this amount of lead dust spread evenly across a football field is enough to create a level that is comparable to the hazard level that was recommended in 1990. Okay, so now we're gonna just take, gonna, this is, we're just gonna focus on this small amount, this five or nearly five micrograms per square foot, if this amount of dust were spread across a football field. So to compare how much lead dust this is in terms of volume, um, I'm gonna put a penny down and you can see that if it's about the same volume with the space in between of, of a penny, similar, there's a dime too. If this were lead dust, this is enough to raise the lead level of an entire football field to five, almost five micrograms per square foot, 4.75 micrograms per square foot. The current recommendation is zero. That's the general summary, that one eighth of a sugar packet worth of lead dust is enough to contaminate a football field to a level that scientists have known now for three decades is hazardous to children. Now I wanna talk about this in the context of the ceiling dot or the bead of the sum lead that Stanley and other insulated stainless steel product manufacturers are using. Now we tried to create a, a bit of material equal to the size of what we assume is a ceiling dot. We originally were thinking like it's about a pea size amount of lead that's used to seal a Stanley cup. Now, this is a little bit on the large side. I mean, have it next to a ruler here. I'll put it next to the ruler with the centimeters. This seemed a little bit large, so we made a little bit smaller one, and we made even a little bit smaller one. So we don't know how much lead they're using 
in the, in the sealing process because we haven't been inside the manufacturing plant for these products. But assuming this might be too much, we, we made it smaller and then we're gonna go with probably somewhere in this range. And we're going to conservatively say that it's likely this small amount of lead, this smaller pea size amount, okay? So if you compare the volume of this pea size amount were this lead, which is not, it's Play-Doh. <laughs> um, it's Play-Doh that my son Charlie expertly mixed to match the color of lead. Um, you can easily see that given the sealing dot of an insulated stainless steel product is made out of a material that is a very high quantity of lead, somewhere between 40 and 60% lead, and that can be translated to either 400,000 parts per million lead or 600,000 parts per million lead. And then comparing that to how much lead it takes to poison a football field to a level of five micrograms per square foot, you can see that this is actually likely, even if we cut it in half, so it's 50% lead, this is easily enough lead to poison half a football field to a level that's considered hazardous by ch for children by current standards. So then you're like, oh, but you know, it's not dust. I'm not touching the bottom of my uh, Stanley Cup. It's um, it's uh, it's not available because there's a cap on the top. Well, the main reason we started doing this is because a child was poisoned from using a pure kiki uh, insulated baby bottle that had a lead sealing dot that he was mashing into his oatmeal. And that was adding a micro particulate amount of lead to his oatmeal every time he ate his oatmeal because his parents didn't know there was lead on the bottom. They didn't know there was a hazard. So if you touch this and it's mushed into the bottom of your Stanley cup, you're gonna rub off onto your finger um, a non-invisible amount, or even if it's an invisible amount, a non-negligible amount of lead, that then if you pick up your, there we go. So if, you're, if you inadvertently touch the bottom of your Stanley cup after the cap's fallen off, if you're touching the cup and, and then, um, or you, if you're a child and you have a fidget of rubbing on the bottom of your cup, which a lot of kids do, and then you touch the cup and then you eat your potato chip, and lick the salt off your finger, you're potentially licking lead dust off your finger. And it doesn't matter that you can't see it. It's invisible. It's an invisible amount of lead dust that wears off into your environment. And this is the concern. Hand to mouth activity that will transfer lead that's nearly solid lead and bioavailable from an object you're touching into your mouth. The end. Thanks for being here. Learn more at leadsafemama.com, tamarub.com. And whatever you do, don't believe the hype from the companies. This is not a small amount of lead. This is a significant amount of lead that's not safe for children. And it's also not safe for adults.